Chapter 1341 Dr. Sexy I have a lot of different powers, Hansen started by saying. Associating himself with a sheep would be strange, but this was a chance for Hansen to be part of a crowd, he believed. Strength in numbers was a legitimate concept, after all. If he could become an ally of the sheep, the current dangerous circumstances might not be so grave for Hans Sr. The sheep seemed peeved by the vague response he had received, though. Hansen caught this, and he wanted to fix the mood between them. So, he boldly proclaimed, I can destroy stuff. With the tin gene locks of the Dongshan Sutra firing on all cylinders, it wasn't exactly a lie. The sheep grimaced, and with disappointment slumping its limbs, it turned to leave. Don't go yet. Talk to me. Hansen wanted to learn what the sheep had expected of him. A weak asterisk SS creature like you probably doesn't even have a geno core. I need someone special, bub. I need someone who can heal or support others. Finding a random creature that can take pleasure in destroying stuff is easy, and I can assuredly find one stronger than a scrawny kid like you, bub. The sheep then ran off. Hansen was confused by this, and so he turned his head to ask Bauer, Did I just get insulted by a sheep? Yes, Dad. I told you to eat more, Bowes said. Hansen could hardly believe he had been condescended to buy a sheep. Hansen could tell it was an ordinary creature, but he could also tell it was as good as an ordinary creature could get. Brother sheep, don't go. I was wrong. I'm good at healing. Hansen yelled, going after the woolly mammal. It was rare to find herbivore creatures, so Hansen didn't want to miss the opportunity to follow the sheep if the rest of its herd were of the same kind. He'd have the benefit of being in a herd, and he wouldn't have to share the corpses of creatures they slew. You can heal, bub, the sheep asked, turning around to see Hansen panning in the chase. The powers of healing were rare, and the sheep did not like Hans Senator. It never expected him to possess the powers of healing, and the sheep had only said what it said to hurry the dialogue along so it could leave. Yeah, where I come from, they call me Dr. Sexy. Hansen puffed up his chest and danced his pecs. The sheep did not believe Hans Senator suddenly. One of its horns departed the seat against its head and went twirling towards a nearby bush. A squeal sounded from the undergrowth, as a rat had unwittingly found itself impaled. The rat struggled to get itself free, and when Hansen went to take a look, he saw that the rat was actually being held in place by a scimitar. Hansen was surprised. The black steel scimitar must have been the sheep's geno core. Okay, Dr. Sexy. Show me what you can do. The sheep gestured towards the rat that seemed to be dying. Hansen then knelt down beside it and started the healing process that he had learned from the holy rhino. Perhaps it was because he was in the fourth god sanctuary, but it took an uncomfortably long time to heal the creature. Well, I can't lie. You really can heal, but... Whiskey, Tango, Foxtrot. Why is it so slow? Ugh, it's fine for now. Come on, bub, the sheep said. Hansen followed after the sheep and came to a forest with many creatures in its eaves. Hansen saw a big black bird staring at him with pinprick eyes that almost burned holes in him. There were four creatures with six legs that had to be as big as tanks. And on the left, there was a spirit sitting against a tree. In front of Hansen, there was a beast that seemed to half resemble a boar. Its rear was just a mangled mesh of bones, though. The creature was mainly black, but its eyes were red, like bright rubies embedded in coal. It was as big as a train compartment, all in all. If he had to guess, he'd go out on a limb and assume that Fearsome Beast was the leader of the motley crew. It looks like meat's back on the menu, boys, the spirit shouted, eyeing Hansen like he was food. The sheep did not answer the spirit and merely spoke to the boar. This is the man you've been looking for. He doesn't even have a geno core. What's the point? That same spirit said rudely. The boar looked at the sheep, and the sheep quickly said, He's weak now, but he can heal you. He will only improve and become stronger. The beast looked at Hansen and groaned. The noise he made was hefty, and Hansen could imagine the power it possessed even from that. Hurry up and heal him, bub, the sheep said. Hansen then noticed a wound on the boar's chest that was bleeding profusely. Wanting to impress and not disappoint, Hansen hurriedly simulated the powers of the holy rhino. He got to healing the mighty beast, but his performance was even worse this time around. The process was slower than it had been for the rat. Hansen guessed it was because of how powerful the creature was. He imagined it had to be primitive class, at the very least. The spirit started laughing until he was out of breath. When he found composure, 
He wheezed out, Ha! You call that healing? Ha ha! The sheep blushed and told the spirit, Any healing is better than no healing. The beast Hansen was healing did not say or do anything. He ignored their bickering and just focused on accepting the healing and trying to rest. The healing process was going to take a while, and Hansen was able to have a home amongst the collective. All he had to do for them, each and every day, was tend to the wounds of the boar. Although Hansen was not interested in being a healer, he was able to learn a lot by residing amongst them. Chapter 1342 Boss Buster Hansen learned a lot from the sheep in his time with them. He was in a portion of land called Jade Hill. It was a relatively tame location, and it was free from the presence of strong creatures. In fact, the posse Hansen had joined up with was the biggest there. The sheep and the six-legged beasts were ordinary creatures. The spirit was only squire class. Hansen thought it best to stick with them, but on the second day of his time with them, the boar he had been healing went off to drink water and never returned. When they went out looking for him, all they found were its bones. Its blood had dyed the entire waterhole red, and when Hansen saw it, his face turned a ghastly shade of gray. He thought he might get the blame. But this didn't appear likely, for when the rest found the boar's remains, they all just ran off in fear. With the black beast having been killed by something, they did not dare remain where they were. Whatever had killed it had to be extremely fearsome. Hansen ran alongside the sheep, thinking it best to stay close. The sheep ran as fast as it could and traversed a great distance. It no longer needed Hansen's company, so it wasn't going to wait around for him. But much to his surprise, Hansen was able to keep up. The sheep said to him, The boss is dead. Do you still want to follow me, bub? Sure. Where are we going? Hansen did not mind going with the sheep, since he seemed to know the land a lot more. He'd be a powerful ally. We're going to find another boss, bub. The sheep continued sprinting for a little while, before turning its head to Hansen and saying, Don't worry. You'll be safe with me. The sheep brought Hansen to a little hill, and there they followed behind a primitive creature. The creature was a green snake, and the sheep told Hansen it was stronger than the black boar they had previously been following. The sheep talked their way into becoming members of the group, and they were both accepted into the fold fairly easily. But that same night, the snake had its head lopped off. When they woke up the next morning, only its head remained. They hadn't a clue where its body had been taken. After the snake was killed, all the creatures began running off again. Hansen sought to stick with the sheep, and the sheep was accepting. The sheep told Hansen that things would be okay, for he knew another powerful creature whose team they could be a part of. Hansen, still wanting to know more, followed after the sheep. In regards to what happened next, Hansen felt a little strange. What was going on had to be far more than a mere coincidence. That next boss was killed, and over the next ten days, they ended up in the service of at least six different bosses. Each boss was killed within three days of the pair coming into their employ. Who keeps killing these bosses? What could they possibly want? Is this phantom menace coming after me? Hansen wondered. It had happened far too many times for it to remain chalked up as a coincidence. Whoever he and the sheep decided to follow would die. Every time they joined up with a new creature, it seemed like they were handing out a death sentence. But the lands about did not have humans, and if someone wanted Hansen dead, it made the most sense for that enemy to be a human. And if they wanted to kill Hansen, why would they go after the creature first? If this enemy could kill the creature they followed with that much ease, then that same enemy could kill Hansen with even less trouble. Are we really that unlucky? Hansen asked himself, longing for normalcy and steadiness with some hearty company. Even the sheep was starting to become depressed. Fortunately, news did not travel and the creatures did not gossip. Hansen and the sheep would be branded the boss busters if word got out that they carried this awful death sentence around with them. The sheep rested for half a day and eventually said to Hansen, There is one last primitive boss we can consult, Bub. Hopefully, his health and his head will fare better. Let's go to him and see if we can find some stability. Sure, Hansen said. Hansen had followed the sheep for quite a while now, and he had come to know the area quite well. If the two did have to go their separate ways, Hansen thought he'd survive just fine on his own. Hansen also thought the two could just go off and make good by themselves. But the sheep was true to its calling. It really wanted to follow others, and since there was only one boss left to see, Hansen thought he might as well accompany it. But Hansen was growing more and more concerned over the constant slaying of primitive bosses. He didn't want this queer enemy coming for him, too. 
The boss they met next was a monster with three horns protruding from its head. The horns were large and gnarly, disfigured like tree branches that had endured far too many winters. As for its body, it was not too dissimilar to that of a cow. The sheep was a smooth talker, and again, they were accepted into the service of the horny cow. The sheep was worried this boss would end up as a hunk of chuck roast, just as the rest had. That same night, he mumbled to himself repeatedly, saying, Please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die, bub. Please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die, bub. Hansen was worried, too, but he had come to like the sheep. It was quite humorous to watch. The creatures that followed the three-horned beast weren't particularly special, and they were actually the same type of creature that the big cheese was. They were all horned cows. Hansen thought it was slightly strange that only he and the sheep were different from the rest. The sheep had to be the slickest talker he had ever met, and his social skills were off the charts. Hansen couldn't imagine trying to talk his way into being happily accepted into a crowd such as that. And while Hansen hadn't earned anything from his time with the sheep, he had instead learned. He had come to know quite a bit. This group was more tight-knit than the others, and they stayed much closer together than the other groups. Hansen himself was only 30 meters away from the boss. And since he had a clear line of sight on the boss, Hansen thought it would be best to watch him with Dong Shinora. If an enemy approached, his focus would reveal the enemy that had hounded them. It can't be just bad luck, can it? Hansen half-asked himself once more. At midnight, Hansen detected strange movement nearby their leader. A second later, the creature's head was hewn off. Fortunately, Hansen was able to see who had done the deed. And when he saw who the murderer was, he was surprised to see it was someone he was quite familiar with. Chapter 1343 Got a Cow Head It was nighttime, but the glade was brightly lit beneath the gracious glow of the moon. Hansen witnessed the slayer of the three horned beast, and he noted how familiar its killer looked. No way. Hansen saw it was a woman with dragon scaled skin, draconic horns, and wings. She was wielding a cleaver. Before Hansen became a demigod, he had eaten the food she had prepared for him each and every day. She looked exactly like the spirit chef the Serpent Throne had been mimicking. While Serpent Throne had generated a sentient doll in her image, this was the real one. This was her, live, and in the flesh. After she lopped the beast's head off, she picked up the creature's carcass and went on her way. She was the size of an average human, but she was able to carry the entire lifeless body of a beast that had to be at least three times her own size with great ease. She went away at a brisk pace, too. And when the gathering of lesser creatures saw the head of their leader oozing blood into the soil, they started freaking out and running away. The sheep woke up, roused from its deep slumber by all the commotion. And when its eyes fell across the bloody head, just like the rest, it wanted to spring back to its feet and race off. But Hansen grabbed the sheep by its tail to stop it. Unfortunately, it paid no heed and simply kept on going. Hansen was unable to hold on to his tail due to the speed he was going and the sheep kept crying out as he went, I'm going to die, bub. I'm going to die. Although he had grown fond of the fluffy thing, Hansen couldn't be bothered with tracking it down. Instead, he was keener on examining the severed head. Now that he knew what was killing the primitive creatures of the land, he didn't feel the need to run off. With his prior connection to the spirit, he didn't fear her so much that he'd flee the area like the rest. The chef was able to slay primitive creatures with ease, and knowing that, it was obvious she wasn't going to waste time hunting down ordinary creatures he was equivalent to. Anyway, Hansen imagined an analogy, appropriate for the chef that she was. In his mind, he compared her to a world-class chef who was proficient at preparing the greatest cuisine that a most magnificent restaurant could offer. To settle for ordinary creatures would be reducing herself to being the dishwasher. Hansen would be another wretched plate to clean, in her eyes. And the less she had to clean, the better. As such, he believed himself to be safe staying in the vicinity if he didn't bother her. Hansen examined the cow-like head and lifted it up. He was going to cook what little of it he could, in the hopes of earning a couple of primitive geno points. And as much as he would have liked to go after the chef, he felt he didn't need to just yet. That wasn't on his agenda for the time being. And even though he once had the chef for a doll, that wouldn't guarantee the real spirit would be friendly to him. After what he had witnessed with Three-Eyed Demon, Hansen would prefer keeping his distance for a little while, in case he found himself getting grilled and carved like a turkey. Seeing how she won it killed the three-horned beast, 
Hansen knew he had no chance of fighting her. If he approached her, and she wasn't friendly to him or Bauer, their chances of survival were pretty slim. Picking up the head, Hansen fancied starting a fire so he could cook it. The entire time he was following the sheep, all he was able to eat were plants. Fed up of pulling grass out of his teeth, Hansen was on cloud nine at the prospect of sinking his teeth into delicious meat again. He was familiar with the area now too. He and Bauer went into a nearby forest with the head, and he cleaned and prepared the head with his water abilities. The cow's head was ridiculously juicy, and the aroma of its sizzling made their bellies groan with hunger. Of course, the last thing Hansen wanted was to draw the attention and ire of other hungry mouths that might be lurking in the area, so he made sure to mask the smell so they could remain hidden. Bauer was drooling at the sight of the succulent meat, and she chewed on the air with a restless mouth in ardent anticipation of the meal that awaited her. Can I eat yet? Bauer couldn't help but ask. Hansen did not have any spices with him, and if the meat was still raw, it wouldn't go down like the treat he wanted it to be. So, he told her, it's almost done. You need to learn some manners. Don't look like you've come down with a fever while you're waiting for food. It's not like this is the first time you've eaten some of Daddy Cool's cooking. Bauer does have manners. Yep. See? Bauer sat up straight then, wanting to give the illusion she was a grown-up woman with some semblance of elegance. But when the scent of the meat tickled her nostrils once more, she practically started drooling. As if possessed by a ghost, she began leaning towards the meat. Hansen couldn't blame her, though. He himself was staring at the meat like a starved, angry wolf. Before it was fully cooked, Hansen began to carve a few cooked slices of meat off the head. Then, he hastily served them to Bauer and himself. Dad, this is good, Bauer exclaimed, as they both gorged on the delicious meat like pigs. It was like a Turkish grill. The head had quite a bit of meat on it, more than Hansen expected. But still, the pair was hungry for more. Bauer was so hungry, she sucked on all the meat stripped bones she could. Bauer ended up eating the most, and disappointingly, Hansen didn't receive any primitive Gino points. It wasn't surprising, though given it was only the beast's head. That's not to say nothing of worth was earned. The three horns had resisted the fire for the entire duration of being cooked. They looked like they'd make useful tools or weapons. With jade skin, Hansen poked the horns and noted how sturdy they still felt. They looked like they'd make for hardy tools, indeed. Since Hansen was practically naked in the fourth god's sanctuary, he settled on using them as weapons for the time being. The horns were hard, but if Hansen used the Dongxian Sutra to remove them from the head, they'd surely break. So, Hansen settled on using jade skin to dig them out completely. The skull was cone-shaped, and the parts he broke off looked to make a fine handle and handguards. The way the horns were shaped and serrated, they looked as if they'd make good sword breakers. And since they were lethally sharp, they'd make decent spears, too. And it was at that moment, Hansen suddenly felt something approach. He turned around and there she was, the chef, cleaver in hand. She was a mere ten meters away. Chapter 1344 If you're dead, you are a dead sheep. Hansen, upon seeing the chef, thought to himself, has she returned for the head? But she'd have to dig into our stomachs if she wanted it back. And that would be no trouble for her. Oh, uh, the head? We thought you had no need for it, so we ate it. Hansen began stepping back bringing Bauer firmly back into his arms. Hansen knew how strong she was through the Serpent Throne's replication of her, but this was the genuine her. This was her as a demigod now, too. If he could, Hansen wanted to avoid a fight. Immediately, he took off running. He knew she enjoyed feeding the Entity Dragon Eater, and not wanting to take a chance of getting spit-roasted for a midnight snack, he thought it best to scram. Hansen had a fitness level of 7,500. If he wanted to rival primitive creatures in strength, he'd have to get that figure up to 10,000. With her being able to topple mighty primitive creatures in one swing, though, three-horned beast king included, he'd need to be even higher. Fighting her was the last thing Hansen wanted to do. The Dongshin Sutra allowed Hansen to see through the entire world, but he didn't think it would give him much of an edge against an opponent who was that strong. The gulf of power that separated the two was too wide. Hansen did not yet have a Geno core, either. He was able to guess she probably had one, but its exact nature was a mystery. Making use of his Phoenix techniques, Hansen committed to the act of flight. Surprisingly, the chef was unable to keep up with him. She was strong, but evidently sluggish when it came to agility. 
Just like any other primitive creature, she could not keep up with Hans Sr. Hansen thought to himself, did she just become a demigod? The man that was dead, slumped against the entrance to the underground shelter. If he was there during her reign, then she couldn't have been in the fourth god's sanctuary for longer than 100 years. Perhaps she has been unlucky all this time and has been unable to gain strength. Hansen's deduction was not too far from the truth. When she first came to the fourth god's sanctuary, she was placed in a very dangerous area where she could not do much, and she had been trapped. When the time came to escape, she barely made it out alive, and only in the past two years had she been able to start getting stronger. Hansen kept on running until he stumbled across a thick bundle of wool on the ground. It was the sheep's butt. The sheep spun around with a mushroom in its mouth and said, Hey, I've been looking for you. Bub, I thought you were dead. Come dine on this. I've even flavored it with soil for you. Once you chowed down, we'll go see another boss. He's a good distance away, but he should be strong. But Hansen had been running like the wind, and he currently had no time to discuss anything. He simply ended up yelling, Run. If the sheep was unfortunate enough to remain, and was later claimed by the chef, he'd become a well-grilled hunk of mutton in no time. When the sheep saw what was tailing Hansen, though, the solace of the shrooms quickly evaporated. In an absolute horror, he froze. Come on, man. Run. Move. Hansen yelled at the sheep, seeing it refused to budge. Suddenly, the sheep began to kowtow, and it pleaded, Please, spare my life. Spare me and I will become a servant. I will do everything you command me to. I will live for you, and you alone. Seeing the sheep beg like that, Hansen couldn't help but freeze, too. But Hansen didn't think begging from the dirt would do him much good. He wagered the sheep would still end up cooked, forked, and eaten, one way or another. He ended up being mistaken, though. It had slipped Hans Sin's mind that the sheep was a silver-tongued cretin that could talk his way out of a paper bag. Stop him. Fear not, milady. I will not let him get away. The sheep leaped before Hans Sin and launched one of his boomerang-like horns towards his friend turned target. This sheep will do anything to survive. Where does faith and morals get off to? Hansen struggled to believe the sheep was more obscene than himself, but alas, it was true. This was a betrayal as cut and dry as one could get. Seeing the sheep's horn heading his way, Hansen brought out one of his own horns to try to deflect it away from him. But despite using a pinpoint precise ghost slash on the incoming projectile, it was not enough to break it and quell its violent approach. The impact knocked the flying horn away, but it was like a heat-seeking missile and it rebounded mid-air to retarget Hans Sin and resume its deadly approach. The asterisk am in, that thing is like a homing rocket. Hansen pulled out a second horn, planning to use Yin Yang Blast to destroy the sheep horn. He knew he had underestimated the power of the sheep's geno core, but he had only seen it in action once before. And things only got worse when Hansen tried to use Yin Yang Blast to take it down. The projectile absorbed his Yin power to propel itself towards him at an even greater speed. Hansen had slowed down considerably to deal with the sheepish traitor. It had given the chef the time necessary to catch up, and now that she was in range, she pulled out her fork of doom. She lobbed it at Hans Sr. Hansen managed to evade the fork, but another sound filled his ears. With a pang, a crystal bowl had trapped him. Boss lady, it is done. The sheep was now like a dog, groveling obediently. The chef ignored him completely, though. Instead, she approached the bowl that domed the area around Han Sr. It's time to bring out the big guns. She's just asking for a super spank. Hansen gathered up a blistering orb of Dongxian sutra-fueled power in his right hand. Chapter 1345, The Boss of Jade Hill The chef approached Hansen with her cleaver in hand. Just as Hansen was about to retaliate with super spank, he heard a chilly voice boom from the skies. Did you kill the primitive creatures? The chef stopped and looked up into the sky. Hansen lowered his hand and also looked up at the phantom figure that was now addressing them. When his vision cleared, he could see a male spirit hovering high up in the air. His eyes were fixed on the chef, and his face bore an expression of distaste. Hansen thought to himself, Per you, bub, you pledged allegiance to the chef, and now she's going to get her asterisk SS handed to her. You chose the wrong side, pal. Who are you? The chef asked the spirit. You killed my creatures, you horrid hag. And you roam these lands without knowing who I am? I am the leader of Jade Hill. These lands you tread belong to me. The spirit paused briefly. He continued to address the chef, his words simmering with restrained anger. 
You killed my creatures, and that means there's a price to pay. You will cough up. The spirit summoned a book in his hands. It was a book that was adorned with a number of strange scrawlings, symbols, and patterns. He opened the copper-like cover and began to draw with his fingertip. Due to Hansen being trapped beneath the bowl, he was unable to see exactly what the spirit was drawing. Beneath the glass encasing, he could not make use of his Da Shen aura. A second later, though, he was done. And with a blinding font of light, a beast came out of the book. It was a three-meter-long creature that had emerged from the page of that book. It cried out and then flew down towards the chef. The spirit looked far stronger than the three-horned beast king the chef had slain earlier, so there was every chance she had met her match here. The chef frowned and threw up her left fist, and from out of nowhere, a fork appeared in her hand. Each prong pierced through the meaty hide, flesh, and body of the beast that was bearing down on her. With the creature stuck firmly in place upon her frightening utensil, the chef began to swing her cleaver at the beast with her one free arm. The beast, however, despite being lodged firmly upon her fork, did not seem to feel any pain. It still tried to attack the chef, flailing helplessly, but it could not reach her. The chef continued to swing and swing, slicing up the spirit's newly spawned creature like a giant sushi roll. You are good, but you are also dead. The self-proclaimed boss of Jade Hill spoke calmly, but his tone was heavy with serious gravitas. The boss of Jade Hill returned to his book and began conjuring something else. The chef, disposing of the mutilated creature on her fork, raised her kitchen utensils once more. She was ready to fight and destroy anything that dared come close. When the next creature was summoned, she destroyed it. And this was how it went for some time. Creature after creature was thrown at her, and before long, she could not keep up with the pace at which these creatures were summoned. The sheep, having seen this, began running away like a hare on fire. Hansen was shocked at the spectacle, and he knew he was in for a lot more surprises in the fourth god sanctuary. This spirit's Gino core was obviously a book, and he wondered what others might possess. It also made him more eager to find out which Gino core he would receive once he got one, and it spurred him with an even greater desire to max out his ordinary Gino points as soon as possible. The chef isn't looking too good. He's drawing way faster than she can exterminate. It's a little cheap of this boss leader guy, if I'm to be honest, Hansen thought to himself. In the fourth god sanctuary, if a spirit was unable to take down a shelter, they'd be unable to respawn. If the chef did not already have a shelter to call her own, she was in danger of being vanquished completely. She was in danger of death, an absolute one. Knowing she could not keep up with the pace of monster spawns, she tried a different tactic. She leaped up into the skies to get up close and personal with the boss of Jade Hill. The boss conjured a bird and stood upon it as the chef approached. And then the bird began to retreat, further and further away as the boss of Jade Hill stuck to his cheap tricks of summoning creatures to attack the chef who was now doing her best to get him. The chef had battled her way through legions of creatures, and there were surely far more to come. She was in a bad spot, and the chances of her actually getting close enough to defeat the boss were looking slim. I don't think she's going to make it. It's a shame but I suppose now is the best opportunity one have to get away. Hansen, watching the corpses of slain creatures rain from the sky, tried punching his way through the crystal bowl to escape. Unfortunately, despite using jade skin to punch with all his might, there was not even a single crack rendered upon his cage's surface. Why is this bowl so hard? Is it a geno core, perhaps? Hansen ventured a guess. Hansen was going to try breaking through the bowl with super spank next, but then, the bull suddenly flew back up towards the chef. Now that Hansen was free, he wasn't going to question the blessing. He took off running as fast as he could. Killing a spirit would not provide him with a benefit, after all. He ran in the opposite direction that the sheep had fled, knowing it was best for him to avoid the traitorous fiend. And as he left, he could hear cries, roars, and the general sounds of a fierce battle high in the sky behind him. That's not to say he cared much for the trouble he was leaving behind. He was just happy to get away. Hansen needed a Geno Core more than anything, right now. Everyone appeared to use a Geno Core to fight, so that put him at a grave disadvantage. Hansen didn't think it was very fair. Because he had come to learn of this region well, Hansen took off in the direction of a large mountain. A primitive toxic tooth used to live there, but it had been killed by the chef shortly after Hansen and the sheep joined its employ. At least now the area was clear. 
The valley he traversed was home to creatures named jade snails. They were slow and weak, but their geno cores and beast souls were good. Wanting to level up and increase his strength, Hansen fancied taking a bunch of them down. Chapter 1346 Jade Snail There were a dozen jade snails occupying the valley, but because they were all so slow, they weren't going to be much of a threat at all. Their geno cores were the shells upon their backs. Although they could not be used to harm Hansen, they offered the snail an incredibly high level of defense. Even primitive creatures would have a difficult time breaking those shells open. Hansen planned to snatch one of their shells and live inside it. That would be much better and safer than if he were to use a tent. Hansen wanted the snail be souls the most, though. The sheep had told him they were an armor type. Hansen and Bauer were still dressed in leaves like cavemen. Obtaining one of those beast souls would be extremely beneficial. Hansen noticed a few of the giant snails moving about near the gentle stream that flowed through the valley, and he thought that they looked like a bunch of houses on the move. The shells were white, which added to the illusion and looked fairly pretty, too. Hansen approached one of them, which prompted the creature to retreat inside its shell. Hansen was targeting them because of their docile, non-aggressive nature. It was a shame he had to pick on such gentle creatures, but given the circumstances, he didn't have much of a choice. The one bad thing about the snails, though, were the toxins they unleashed. They were slow, yes, but the sticky trail they left behind was wretchedly poisonous. If another creature consumed the sticky secretions, it wouldn't be long before the toxins ravaged their body and they'd die. If this happened, the snails would then go and eat the fallen creature. Hansen knew about all this, as it was information given to him by the sheep. And not wanting to waste any time, Hansen swept toward the snail and unleashed a powerful ghost slash at it. A big metal sound rang across the length of the valley, and unluckily for Hansen, his brazen swipe had not even left a single scratch mark upon the shell of the snail. Ghost slash could teleport and befuddle opponents, but this trick did not increase its damage output, and there'd be nothing he could do to improve it on the fly. Hansen wasn't going to use his fist to strike the shell, either, because it was poisonous. So, Hansen drew out his horns and tried striking the shell with jade skin activated. And because the horns were like spears, Hansen decided to use a skill he hadn't used in a long time. He employed the use of drill head to try to drill into the snail's fortification. It was a successful approach. A plume of white dust erupted from where Hansen started drilling into the shell, and he managed to lodge his horn a fair way inside. The snail had clearly felt it, too, for it cried out in pain. Then it began trying to roll away while it was still inside the shell. Hansen leaped away just in case and then flipped over to the other side of the snail. Taking aim, he began drilling through the other side before it completely escaped him. The other snails in the area had taken notice of what was going on by now. Some began to sloppily wiggle their way over to support their brother against the human aggressor, while others tucked into their shells and rolled over. But thankfully, Hansen was far faster and quite a bit stronger than the jade snails. The geno cores couldn't protect the snails from Hansen, so that pretty much rendered them hopeless against him. Hansen eventually killed the snail he had started on, but right after it died, the shell shattered into bits. Ordinary creature jade snail killed. No beast soul gained. Geno core destroyed. Consume its flesh to gain 0 to 10 ordinary geno points randomly. Even if Hansen was able to kill those snails, their shell seemed likely to break. Maybe I'll just keep going to nab two beast souls instead, then. We can't stay naked any longer, Hansen said to himself, before targeting another snail. When he approached it, though, he stopped. Then, he thought of something else. This ingenious idea prompted him to leave the valley. After a period of waiting, hidden just outside the border of the valley, all the snails eventually relaxed. They all came back out of their shells to move towards the fallen snail and eat it. Without any more time to waste, Hansen summoned something. Hansen summoned the bronze geno core dust bug. Watching the snails eat, Hansen figured he could fill the dust bug with the element of earth for a hearty stealth attack. Once he had prepped it for use, the dust bug took off flying towards the slimy things. It flew fairly slow, but there was nothing Hansen could do about that. It was a small and hard thing, and it had a lot of cons. That was to be expected, though. After all, it was only a bronze-class geno core. But Hansen thought the few positives about the dust bug were all he needed. He could make do with the negatives, since he was only fighting near-harmless snails. The snails did not have the Dongshan aura, either. 
with dull senses that could not detect the dust bug slowly flying towards them. Eventually, the bug touched down near a snail and hopped onto one of their gooey bodies. The snail quickly retreated into its shell, feeling something foreign suddenly touch it. But it was too late, for the dust bug had already dug its way inside the body of the snail, as if by magic. The shell wasn't going to help the snail here. It was just like what happened to Hansen before, in which an excruciating amount of pain was dealt, all from the inside of the snail's body. It was literally being killed from the inside out. The bug was very small and rather weak, though. It took the dust bug two hours to completely kill the jade snail. Ordinary creature jade snail killed. Beast soul gained. Bronze Geno core received. Jade. Snail shell. Consume its flesh to gain 0 to 10 ordinary Geno points randomly. Hansen was delighted to receive both the Geno core and the beast soul. Hansen threw away the leaves that currently clothed him and summoned the beast soul. A clean, white armor covered his entire body. The only thing missing was a helmet. But even without that, Hansen found himself pleased and satisfied with his new armor. Daddy, I want one, too. Bauer pulled at Hansen's leg, as if begging for a set. She was sick and tired of the leaves and pricking twigs that made her skin itch. Don't worry, I'm going to get you one. Hansen used his dust bug to take out another snail. Chapter 1347 Spare My Life, Please Ten hours passed, and when Hansen slew his eighth jade snail, he managed to obtain a second beast soul. He gave this to Bauer. Hansen wasn't planning on killing any more than he had to especially after collecting everything he had been hoping to get. The ratio of Geno core collections far outweighed that of the beast souls, though, for Hansen had managed to obtain seven of them. Unfortunately, they were all bronze class, but although they were as small as beans at first, they could be pumped up to the size of a house if they were given a bit of power. Just like the dust bug, they were all of the earth element, too. Hansen used his horns to cut up the snails. He would obtain a hearty amount of Geno points by eating the vast amount he had killed, but he wasn't entirely sure whether or not they were edible. They were toxic, after all. And in fear of this poison, Hansen made sure to give each slab of meat he cut a good washing. He scrubbed them fiercely and cleaned them up well, but even still, he did not feel safe cooking them up. When the meat had finished sizzling, Bauer looked as hungry as she did the night before. But this time, Hansen stopped her trying to grab a bite. He had to make sure they were safe to eat first. Hansen used his horn and stabbed one of the slabs of meat. Then, he chucked it onto the grass a distance away. Then, in a nearby bush, Hansen made himself comfy. He was going to watch it intently, sitting in silence. A while later, a basketball-sized bug made an appearance. It scurried over towards the meat Hansen had placed. It was called a snake bug, for its head and neck could elongate. Its jaw was said to be fiercely powerful, and with its teeth, it could snap and chew through steel with ease. The sheep told Hansen he'd have to be careful if he encountered one, for they rarely let go once they had bitten into something. Furthermore, their fangs injected a lethal poison into their prey. Hansen wasn't planning on fighting it, though. All he wanted to do was test if the jade snail's poison would damage the snake bug once it had taken a bite. The insect launched its head like the firing of a hoshot. Its teeth sunk into the succulent meat and began to winch back like a chain. Bauer took notice, and she thought it was a theft of great insult. Fortunately, she did not do anything hasty. And as the snake bug gobbled up the slab of meat, it suddenly began to convulse violently. It rolled onto its back and twitched in a ghastly fashion, as blisters and boils began to pop up across its body. It started to lash out and writhe around amidst the agony it was suffering. But as it did... The boils and bubbles burst to release disgusting, smelly, slimy juices. Hansen was shocked at the sight, and he thought it to be a rather revolting scene. The snake bug inflicted poison on others, so it should have had some resilience to the poison of the jade snail. And yet, the fact that it had reacted like this spoke volumes about the toxicity of the poison the jade snails wielded. Eventually, the snake bug stopped moving. It had died. Ordinary creature snake bug killed. No beast soul gained. Geno core unobtained. Consume its flesh gain 0 to 10 ordinary Geno points randomly. Hansen was surprised it counted as a kill. He returned deeper into the valley where the jade snails resided and noticed many more had appeared. They were all busy in the process of consuming their slain brethren. Hansen chased them all away. The meat of the snail shrunk quite a bit after being cooked, so Hansen was able to fry a lot to take with him. 
By the time he was done, he had cooked up 200 kilograms of meat. Hansen packaged it all up and prepared to move off someplace else. Killing ordinary creatures was not a difficult thing to do, he believed. All he had to do was be careful when dealing with their geno course. Hunting primitive creatures would undoubtedly be difficult, and the need to achieve a fitness level of 10,000 was most certainly no joke. But now that he had all that poisonous meat, he had more than a few ideas about what he might be able to do. The sheep was true to its nature. It liked following others, particularly leaders that were stronger than itself. There was, however, one creature even the sheep was not willing to go near. That creature was a very angry being, and merely venturing past the edges of its territory would have it wanting to kill you. Hansen brought his meat there to see if he could kill the creature that the sheep feared oh so much. If he was able to kill it, he ran the chance of obtaining a geno core and a beast soul. The creature was a bona fide primitive creature, too. Such treasures would make for some good gear. Furthermore, the creature was said to be fiercely guarding a geno plant. If Hansen was able to slay the creature, the plant would then belong to him. Holding 200 kilograms of poisonous meat in his arms, he placed it down near a portion of the ground that was split and around two meters wide. Hansen peered down into the pit he had selected and noted how black it was. He then dropped the meat down the hole. He was surprised to hear how long it took for the meat to hit the deck. Hansen then turned around to run. If he killed the beast he had come for, the announcement would surely play. But as he moved away from the ground, he caught sight of a white fluffy animal. Much to his disappointment, he had encountered the cheap, double-crossing sheep once more. You cheap sheep. Oh, I'm having mutton tonight. Hansen yelled as he ran towards the sheep with his horns drawn. The sheep knew he had gone too far the last time they met and it wasn't likely Hansen was the sort to let bygones be bygones and let him off the hook. And just as Hansen caught up to the woolly prat, Hansen called out, Cheap sheep, this is your judgment day. The sheep knew he couldn't outrun Hansen, and so he quickly threw himself onto the ground in a cowed out position. He pleaded, Spare my life, please. Hansen felt a chill run down his spine, and he thought to himself, You asterisk shoal. You tried to kill me. You can't weasel your way out of this one. Hansen was planning on striking the sheep down then and there. But just as he was about to, something red appeared in the grass. Chapter 1348 Fighting Fire with Fire Hansen was taken aback. He thought the slippery, worm-tongued cheap sheep had played a magic trick on him. Looking at the red figure that had just appeared on the plane, he noticed it was the chef. Unfortunately for her, she looked to be in very sorry shape, and the red color was the blood that soaked her person. Pang! The chef collapsed on the ground. Hansen could breathe a sigh of relief, knowing she wasn't a threat. But he also smirked a little as he thought about getting revenge on her. Hansen pulled out his horns, ready to finish her off. But she managed, with great strain, to look up and mumble a few words. She said, Han. Jean. G. Hansen immediately withdrew his weapons and bent down near her. He raised to ask, What did you just say? She quietly repeated what she had spoken, pauses and all. Han. Jean. G. Hansen now knew he had not been mistaken, hearing what she said. He then recalled the man who had died slumped against the entrance to the underground shelter. After examining the person, Hansen and his companions had discovered a pocket watch on him. There was an old photo inside, featuring an unknown middle-aged man and his father, as a child. Hansen had asked his mother who the man was but she did not know who it was, either. Now that she had spoken the name Hanjinji, Hansen thought to himself, what connection does she have to Hanjinji? Might she know who the man holding my father was, the same person who was dead outside the tree door? Hansen wanted to ask her more questions, but she had passed out. Hansen wished to wake her up, but before he could do anything, he felt a frightening presence approaching quickly. It was the boss of Jade Hill. There were many beasts following him, like a swarm of locusts. Hansen picked up the chef and began running. He would have happily killed her earlier, but there was the possibility she held valuable information. He wasn't going to let her die now. If he failed to get her to safety, he wouldn't learn more about his father or find out anything about that photo. Even if she didn't know a whole lot, Hansen was eager to follow even the most meager trail of breadcrumbs he could find if it meant securing a lead around the mysteries that surrounded his father. Hansen ran off like a madman with the chef on his shoulders. Unfortunately, he was unable to go at a pace quick enough to shake off the tide of beasts behind him, 
and the wretched spirit who commanded them. After running for a while, Hans Sen's eyes traced a sheep running in the distance. He imagined the fluffy fiend had managed to get away while he was busy examining the chef. It was a slow creature, though, and it wasn't long before Hansen caught up with it. Bossman bub, don't kill me. I'll do whatever you want, the sheep pleaded and begged, as its little legs carried it as fast as they could. Stand right there, then, Hansen shouted. No can do. Are you blind to the army that's chasing us, bub? The sheep wasn't willing to follow the command and simply kept on running. F asterisk CKU, Hansen said, keeping up with the sheep. Across that emerald expanse, the sheep was leading the chase. Hansen was directly behind it, while a massive swarm of creatures chased at a good few paces behind. Stop right now. No. Stop. No. Hansen knew he wasn't going to listen, so he exerted more energy to try to outpace the sheep. The beasts were catching up, too, and they didn't look as if they were going to get winded any time soon. The sheep, seeing that Hansen was about to overtake him, summoned its horn and fired it towards him. Hansen, seeing the boomerang come for him, employed his phoenix techniques to swoop across and over the sheep. The sheep was not very proficient when it came to combat, and after leaping towards it, Hansen grabbed the sheep by its neck and lobbed it at the swarm of creatures behind. Go make him your boss, Hansen shouted out. Hansen believed the sheep might actually get the job done. After the sheep was launched towards the self-proclaimed boss of the Jade Hill, Hansen saw the boss raise his hands towards it. The sheep immediately pleaded, Boss, don't kill me. I'm coming to serve and obey you. After the sheep called this out, the boss frowned. He wasn't impressed. He grabbed hold of the sheep and cast it away like a stone. Hansen, seeing cheap sheep earn itself another boss, hoped someone or something might suddenly appear to kill it. Strangely, nothing happened, and the monsters continued to chase him. Hansen was just testing it out, though. He didn't think the death of leaders was some sort of curse or ability cheap sheep inherently had, but he was curious nonetheless. So, he had no choice but to continue running. The oppressive atmosphere propagated by those behind him was incredibly strong, though, and Hansen could not keep up at the rapid pace he was going. He knew he'd not be able to escape, no matter how long he went for, so he gritted his teeth and launched himself back towards the boss of Jade Hill. Chapter 1349 Generating a Geno Core Hansen was thinking to himself, Come on, don't stop me. I just need to get a little closer. The boss of Jade Hill's beasts would be difficult for Hansen to tackle mano a mano, and if he found himself bearing the brunt of one's attack, he could find himself in a similar condition to that of the chef. If Hansen could just about reach the boss, he could use Super Spank to deliver enough damage to kill it and end the threat for good. But Hansen had to physically touch his opponent with his hand to use Super Spank. Getting that close was a dangerous feat, and it was a stunt he wasn't entirely sure he could pull off. Hansen was still a good distance away from his foe, and the tide of monsters was already headed his way. With the chef in one arm and a horn in the other, he stood strong and broke the wave. He managed to slay every creature that dared to come near him. Why am I so unlucky, huh? No one has come to help kill this guy. Hansen was disheartened. The boss of Jade Hill looked at Hansen with a strange expression. The human had achieved the power of a primitive creature, but he had no geno core. The boss had initially only wanted to kill the chef, but he couldn't allow a human like that to run rampant. He had to make Hansen his target now, as well, and not only the chef. Hansen's jade skin had a high threshold of stamina, but he had been running for a long time already. Having exhausted much of his energy, Hansen knew he couldn't keep on fighting the onslaught of creatures that were spawned to impede him. As he had seen with the chef previously, the boss could generate creatures continually, almost faster than he could kill them. If he kept this up, he'd become winded and fall. How am I supposed to get out of this? Hansen asked himself, looking around for a solution to his woes. The boss of Jade Hill was too far away from Hansen, and with the barrage of monsters that kept on coming, it didn't look likely he'd reach the spirit. Things were different in the fourth god sanctuary, and there was a perpetual sense of unease. The atmosphere and gravitas of every situation were heavy, and this was only tripled under the threat of those creatures. And with everything being so strong, the powers he might have once used to sunder mountains in the third god's sanctuary could only manage to split rocks here. A weak, new demigod to the fourth god's sanctuary did not have to encounter a creature or spirit to meet a grisly end. 
Hansen wagered the atmosphere itself could choke the life out of them. Hansen had a few AOE hypergeno arts that could hit multiple opponents at once, but they wouldn't be of much use here. And again, that was mainly because he lacked a geno core to call his own. He had to use his body to fight, just as it was. As such, his attacks had to be singular, too. I can't turn back now. I must do this. Hansen then decided to take off running towards the split earth. He had wanted to poison the creature that resided within, but now, provided it hadn't yet died, he thought it might be possible to enlist its aid. Hansen bought himself time by breaking the bodies and cutting the throats of all the creatures that came close. But when he killed one, the body would explode into a whiff of black smoke and respawn. Hansen's arm was dealt a scratch at one point, but Jade's skin proved sufficient to withstand the light fumbles he made. He didn't even end up bleeding. He was still a good distance away from the split earth. He regretted running as far as he had, for it now proved rather difficult to return. The boss of Jade Hill was getting peeved as this transpired. He was annoyed the beasts were unable to do Hansen harm, so he cast even more powers into the pages of the book he wielded. Then, the bronze book turned to silver. Hansen's mood turned grim upon seeing this. It was a night-class spirit, and that meant his Geno core had probably turned silver class. Silver Geno cores would create far stronger enemies and generate a threat haunts and might not be able to overcome. And to coincide with this, the boss's temperament looked disturbingly ill. When he drew with his fingertips, he drew carefully and concisely. He wasn't scrawling across the page as wildly as he had been. He was now more deliberate. Hansen saw a silver light beam from out of the new and improved book, and it spawned a silver-winged ape creature that was able to fly directly over to Hans Sr. Dong. Hansen punched the ape with a mighty release of energy, which had it stumbling back 10 meters. This guy must be primitive. Hansen frowned. The boss of Jade Hill continued to draw, but Hansen noticed the trickles of sweat that were rolling down his forehead like a number of beads. Clearly, the repeated casting of these greater creatures was taking its toll on the spirit. After summoning four of those apes, he stopped. Hansen was in a bad situation, and he had to use Jade's skin to equalize his fitness with theirs. Hansen had to deal with four horribly powerful apes and a tide of regular creatures, all by his lonesome. Hansen used Jade's skin and his phoenix techniques, trying to use these enemies for cover. He didn't make use of Super Spank, though for he was afraid he'd spook the boss into running away if it found out what Hansen was capable of. And Hansen wasn't in the mood to make lasting enemies, either, so the threat of the self-proclaimed boss had to end there and then. Hansen wanted to fight the boss right then. Exerting his strength to take down the apes was a waste of both time and energy. He was starting to incur wounds, too, as the brutal hits delivered by the apes were making him bleed. After a long fight, Hansen felt a strange power begin to well up inside his body. It felt as if his very cells were being empowered by jade skin. Hansen was enthused, feeling this. He was feeling the same sensations old man G had once described to him. Is my Gino core generating? Hansen asked himself with gleeful surprise. Chapter 1350, First Self Gino Core It was different than the typical flow of energy. This time, Hansen's body was generating a strange substance that was new to him. It came out of his cells and went to sit in his sea of soul. And as this transparent substance gathered together, he was able to see it clearly. The substance was a little like water, but thick like a gel. It was like a non-Newtonian fluid, but different, as well. It was difficult for Hansen to determine what it was, exactly. Hansen already knew different hypergeno arts could produce different geno cores, and because he'd been using jade skin, that was what he used to generate his first. The substance that was bleeding into the sea of soul continued to amass and compose its form, all as one. Unfortunately, Hansen had no time to watch the process. He was still under fire and had to fight back the army of creatures, but there at least seemed to be a light at the end of that very long tunnel. All he had to do now was hold them back and allow the process of the Geno Core's production to finish. Furthermore, Hansen could not control the shape or form the substance was building. The finished Geno core was not something sculpted by the person's desire. It was constructed through the host genes under the influence of their hypergeno art. They themselves had no personal hand in it. As Hansen battled his way through the tide, he felt something amiss in his sea of soul. Something else was occurring. Hansen took a peek back inside his sea of soul, and there, he saw his black crystal glowing. It was generating another substance 
something black, and this substance was mixing in with the Geno core that was currently in production. The Geno core was transparent, but the black substance was darker than dark. It was blacker than ink. It was concerning. When the two mixed together, though, the overall substance looked like cream. But this intrusive substance did not enlarge the form of the Geno core that was being built. Instead, it was acting like a light tincture that altered its color. Hansen wished to stop the black crystal from interrupting or possibly damaging the process, but he found himself unable to. And from this black crystal, more and more liquid began to ooze. Hansen then noticed a change in the crystal's form. It had become smaller, somehow. Throughout its time in three sanctuaries, it hadn't once changed its shape. But now, it was. Whether that was a good omen or a bad one, he could not tell. Hansen was unable to play any part in the formation of the Geno Core, and all he could do was allow the events transpiring in his sea of soul to play out. But once the black crystal had shrunk by 10%, it stopped shrinking. The creamy Geno Core began to look like an enclosed flower, on the precipice of opening in full bloom. This was also the point Hansen acknowledged to be the most crucial moment. He eagerly anticipated the reveal of the Geno Core and the effect the black crystal had had on it. Hansen was unable to watch it constantly, though. He feared he might miss the initial reveal due to the constant pressure the four silver-winged apes were putting on him. And then, a vibration, like a violent tremor, sent shockwaves through his body and sea of soul. It was like a high-magnitude earthquake. When Hansen popped his head in to take a look once more, he was shocked. What is this? What is it? Hansen wondered. Sitting inside the sea of soul was a cream-colored item. It looked like a ceramic object. Its shape was very strange, however. It was oval, not too far off the shape of an egg. Has it not finished yet? Do I need to fetch a spoon and break the top off? Hansen wondered. Leaning in for a closer look, Hansen checked out its basic info. self Geno core Bronze Crystal Core. Hansen was frozen. He was not expecting to receive something special, but he didn't expect to receive something so inherently dull and basic as that, either. A lame name didn't always mean something was poor, but something as horrendous and plain as Crystal Core was awful. It was as uninspired as its shape. Hansen thought he'd receive a weapon like the chef possessed. He thought he'd get something that would help him out of his current predicament. But all he had received was an egg. Not wanting to remain a pessimist, though, Hansen decided to look on the bright side and say, well, looks can be deceiving. Never judge a book by its cover. Never judge a Geno Core by its shape. It might actually be really powerful. Hansen decided to summon the egg Geno core. The creamy, egg-shaped crystal appeared in front of Hans Senator it hovered in the air before him. Hansen commanded it to strike one of the beasts near him. Seeing the egg go for the creatures, Hansen wondered to himself, hmm, I wonder if this will strike them like a bullet? Or better yet, work like a grenade and explode? Hansen didn't want to be so negative, so he remained optimistic and hoped for the best. After all, the crystal had been generated by Jade Skin. Perhaps it was just the appearance of the item that was lame. The egg struck the head of one of the monsters as Hansen crossed his fingers and waited for a miracle to happen. Bauer grasped Hansen's neck so she could lean forward and squint, equally excited to see what might happen next. Then, a second later, their eyes opened wide as if they had just encountered a ghost. But it was all for the wrong reasons. The egg hit the forehead of a creature, and that was it. There was no explosion. The ape did not even reel back in pain. Like a bouncy ball, it bounced back. Hansen could not believe he had generated something so useless. And due to the item's oval shape, it bounced off in a different direction and drifted off behind Hans Sr.